A few years ago, I bought this Lambda regulated power supply. It goes from 0 to 40 volts and 0 to 350 milliamps. I bought it at Excess Solutions. It says $40. I think I probably talked them down to like $30 or $25. But either way, it was a bit pricey, but it's, it's a cute little power supply. And the bottom says 78, so I believe it's from 1978. And it has a lot of issues. First off, power plug is missing the ground pin. Somebody snapped it off. Somebody accidentally snapped off the positive pin. And I think we could just probably cheat by moving the ground pin and painting it red. Because if I have negative, I don't really need ground. And I could always find a replacement later. But the real issue is it just stopped working. It worked for a few weeks and then it just kind of stopped. And I'm not quite sure what's going on. Oh, another issue. I should start writing these down because I might need to order parts for this. These potentiometers are extremely stiff. This one's easy though. Just these ones are extremely stiff. Oh. Oh. You mean to tell me it has been working? So I guess maybe the meter is just busted. Well. So 37 volts. Mm. Um, let's get something to test it with. Will this work? This might work. Oh. So I guess this thing didn't stop working. It was just... The meter stopped working. Wow. That's better. So, that's an easier problem. This would be such a nice little lab, like tabletop, desktop power supply. some quality equipment there. Well, good news. All these capacitors are at 0.3 volts. Well, that's not that bad. So, I guess I don't need gloves. Seems this circuit is very good at not holding too much of a charge. Look at that wild heat sink. That is so cool. And then we have a very old chip down there. Mm, there's something. Oh, another one fell. Okay. So, these little spacers went somewhere. Oh, I see. It's just little spacers that held this on. That's not so bad. There we go. Okay. Oh. The meter is frozen. Locked solid. <gasps> Whoops. The connector on the back is really, really weak. And this is all just absolutely ruined. What is going on here? Oh, I see. So, on the bottom is this little spring. And there's a wire. You can't even see it going up. And it pulls the coil down. And up here is this one. And you can almost barely see the wire. And it's broken. And so the coil is being pulled down. So that's why it's busted. Oh, that is a very difficult fix. That wire is just so tiny. You can only see it for the reflection on it. So that goes down into here. 
and into that little triangle shaped hole on this side it looks like it has a little knot tied in it and so it latches into there but I may need to solder it Stuck a little bit. I'll need to get some flux in there somehow. Sort of. And then it broke. Ah, oh, it broke at the top. Damn it. not perfect but it's better it pulls it off to the side though so it's it's grinding against this side I can pull it over like so oh look at that so I've taken that very thin wire that I can barely see and I've re-soldered it and now it's very delicate. I will not touch it anymore as much as I can. Just a little off balance is all. Oh well. I imagine that could be fixed. Alright, so I re-soldered it. Um, the wire, I soldered too far off center. And so the coil was lopsided. And I was able to solder it and push it back. And now it's soldered on there nice and strongly. And now it, it doesn't get pulled down from the off-center coil. That's good. Now to put it back together without killing it. It's good enough for me. I can just learn that it's a little bit off, you know. And it's tunable too. <gasps> it works, kind of.
only shows 20 volts though. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. We didn't really fix it worth a damn. So what I might do is just tack on a little digital digital voltmeter and call it a day because it seems like that might, might be all I can really do. Oh, that fit. It was a Torx fit in an Allen key, but oh well. Nobody needs to know. of garbage. Not serviceable, hardly at all. There's a lot of crud in there. I'll need to clean that off. Put some grease in there. I don't know what to use, so I'm just going to use ball bearing grease because it's not going to be for electrical contacts. It is going to be for this little bushing. Oh, that's so much better. The oil that was in there, the grease, I mean, it was so hard that I chipped it away with a knife. So I guess that makes sense. I put a little bit more grease in there for whatever section on here pushes downward. better. A lot better. It's still quite tight. appears to be the same as before with the same dried up crusty stuff I think this is an actual oh this is an actual different design I see so this is a real stat and this is a potentiometer At least with that one, I didn't have to remove it from the circuit. up on something but let's let's plug it in and see if the meter even really works oh there we go okay 
Oh, so we have 30, 36.9 volts. And it's only reading 15 volts on the meter, so the meter is busted. That's unfortunate. But I raided my little inventory of junk and I found this little voltmeter and I found this little voltmeter, which this one seems to almost fit in there. Almost. And I think we can go with this one. We'll need to find anywhere from 4.5 volts to 30 volts DC inside of there that's consistent so we can run this off of it. And I do not think that the shunt will hook up natively, but eh, probably, probably won't be worth really trying, honestly, but we can see. It's a shame, but these little old meters just aren't very reliable. Oh, whoops. No, oh, that's not what I'm supposed to do, but oh well. So. I regret to inform you that I have comple completely fucked my chances. Um, now it does nothing. So... I was poking around, trying to find, because I found the manual for a different one, I was trying to find the, um, the 5 volt pin on this chip, the Motorola FBT. FBT-031 and uh, I have, no, no matter, I, I'm okay with it, but I have this thing where my, my body will just jerk really hard and it's really bad at night because I'll just like feel really hard. Well, I had the, the lead on pin 6 and I jerked and it crossed over pin 5 and 6 and now it only output 0.4 volts. So it's pretty clear that that chip, I just fried it. And that chip, I had just seen online, looking it up, that some people had been looking for it and it's incredibly difficult to find and it's very easy to kill. So, I have now killed this little um, power supply. So that sucks, but kind of a crappy power supply anyway. I like the out, I like the size of it. Um, it's just I have a little module that would fit inside of there, and it would go from zero to eighty volts and um, three amps instead of point three five amps. So, I mean, this is old crappy technology, and it's not as serviceable as you'd want it to be. So, I think now it's a good time to do a mod where we rip out all the components. And um, we might be able to use the power transformer. Might be a good idea to just, just to remove that too. And we can stuff a bunch of newer stuff into there. And have a nice little, a nice little power supply. But since I killed that that chip by accidentally crossing over the two leads with the with the um, the probe, then. I'm just going to get get pissed off at this. So, let's end it there. It's a $45 power supply that I just blew up. So, I should step away and come back to it in a month or a year. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching. See ya. I destroy as I'm out of focus. Probably better anyway because that's the fact that looks nicer than me.